One, two, three. All right, we're going to come back to it, eh? Um, now, there might be a couple of people outside having a smoke or something, but um, we'll just um, we'll proceed and they'll, um, they'll just, once they've finished their, um, whatever they're up to, they'll, they'll wander back in. Um, so let's, is there questions? Let's, any questions first? Yes, bro. So is the Taiwan one the same sort of thing? The Taiwan and Korean they just done the same as the Korean one? Uh, sorry, the Korean agreement is, um, would have, be similar to some of the other ones on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade website, um, but it will not be as dramatic as the TPP, right? Because the negotiators uh, in the TPP, particularly the USA corporations, are a lot more aggressive in terms of their demands, okay? What I'm confused to know, I'm asking is, I've just made an agreement with Taiwan. No, 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 just with Korea. No, no, this was just in the last few days. I've made one with Taiwan. Oh, okay, this is about starting negotiations with Taiwan, right? So that, those negotiations now might take some time to go, but they would, they would probably be uh, overshadowed by any agreement in TPP if Taiwan comes into the TPP which it currently isn't in it, right? Like it's not one of the negotiating part partners. So, yeah, so all of these things are going on trying to sort out, you know, their, their arrangements. But it might take several years. Um, for instance, the, Co the Korean Free Trade Agreement, I think they started negotiations on that in 2010 or 11 as well. So it's taken four or five years to sort out. Um, with TPP, um, they've kept telling us that uh, it's imminent that they'll have an agreement and they told us that sort of like in 2013 towards the end of it then they told us that towards the end of 2014 right and there's been several dates and now they said oh April right and um, so I'm not sure when it's going to happen right but we do know that the USA election cycle might interrupt it or lower its imperative, if you like, in terms of this. Because once it goes into the USA election cycle, everything else is forgotten. And they just have sheer madness and theatre for the next 18 months, right? And then God help us all what decision they make, right? Like, What's the signed off as part of his legacy? Yeah, well, that's right. So we've got to watch out for legacies, right? Um, because, yeah, because, like... His legacy may put 700 million people in the shit, right? 300 and so million in, in um, the USA. Well, it's more than that. 200 million in, um, in um, Mexico, 100 million in um, Japan, 40 million in Canada. Anyway, the list goes on. Um, yeah, so there's that. So is it beyond redemption for us now then? No, that's why we're working here. Right? I mean, nothing is over until the fat lady sings, and I haven't heard anyone singing tonight. You know the Federal Reserve was signed in secret in 1930. Okay, so the Federal Reserve was cooked up on an island, right, called Jekyll Island, right? Okay, and in the years, in a couple of years leading to 2013, and it was sprung on uh, the U.S. Parliament, uh, the U.S. Congress on the 23rd of December, I think, is when it went through. So the US Federal Reserve had its 100th birthday two years ago. All right? Happy birthday, world. All right. Globalisation, isn't it? Well, OK, so globalisation. OK, so we've got something like 200 nations in the world, right, all fighting and squabbling over the resources, OK? With the larger, richer nations using oppressive force and power, right, onto the less developed nations and saying, you need to let us get in there and use up those assets or you need to stop doing subsistence farming and start making coffee for us or soya beans or, or soya beans for our cows so that we can feed um, all the people with lots of chemical clown stuff. I mean, this globalisation thing is a problem until you get some sort of settlement Right? which allows nations to be at peace with each other. Okay? 
Now, that was the idea of the UN in the period after the Second World War. Okay? But, like all things that are set up with good intentions, right, as, as soon as it got set up, it carried a few strong policies like the Universal Declaration on Human Rights right, and the Convention Against Torture and women's rights and looking after the environment and all the rest of it. All these are good policies. Right? Enforce them. Right? So what policies do they enforce? Corporate interest and property rights. So they've institutionalised these, but they've not institutionalised human rights. Look, yes, but, but hasn't that happened because you're talking about different countries here. How many countries are actually operating as countries and how many are operating as corporations? Okay, so corporation. New, New Zealand is a corporation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, biggest, the biggest hundred of economies in the world, 51 of them corporations. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. So there's 150, 200 nations with pens, if you like, that people are in. The corporations don't have <coughs> those apart from, oh, they don't have a law against this, we'll put our offices there. Exactly. And that's all that, that's, otherwise it, nations are not even recognised. Okay, but it's up to us to determine what are the rules in our nation, right? Because, and if we vacate that field and say, oh, no, we can't be bothered, Right? Those ones that are really interested in profiting from involving themselves will. And they do it all the time. They're paid for. Right? The people that are pushing these property rights interests are all paid for interests. Right? The public interest is free. Right? I work for free, basically. Right? Like I come along and say, well, if you want your nation to look after your interests, you need to engage. Right? That's the story. Right? Because our disengagement, our distraction by the TV, by all our devices, by whatever else, right? By our, you know, there's lots of things to get distracted by. There she went, you know? It's like whatever it is, okay? All of those things, we take our eye off the ball, right? And then we allow the paid-for interests to take over the game, right? Now, if we want New Zealand or Aotearoa New Zealand to be our nation state, right, for, and, and its legislature, its parliament to be making rules on our behalf, then we need to engage. That's what this project's about, right? And that's why... For whatever reason, at this point in my time, I've decided to jump up and run around the place because I can see a way through. Like, that's... It's like now is the time to throw in our hat, you know, and say, all right, we're going to have a go. Because TPP, whilst it's a problem, is all, and, and any problem is a challenge, right, we grow from meeting challenges. Like we all grow from meeting a challenge, whether it's a broken heart or a stubbed toe or whatever else, right? We grow from meeting these challenges, okay? And in that growth, right, we can become a lot better than what we are. And we could actually, like, back, I, I spent a bit of time over, like, when I took my break off from um, Wellington, I went south. Down, I went down to Dunedin. I was reading books. And one of the authors that I spent a lot of time with was a guy by the name of Bill Such. Right? Bill Such. Okay, so he was, a, he was an Englishman who immigrated with his family from... Uh, I can't remember anyway where in England. But he came to Wellington. And he was a, also, like in his career, he was well-travelled. He was an economist and he was a bureaucrat in the New Zealand government in the Ministry of Economic Development. Now, he's probably what you'd call a polymath, right? Genius at a whole number of different things. And he was really interested in, in economic development, in education, in architecture, in gardening, in all sorts of different things, and stuck his nose in and was very proactive about our economic development. That is about trying to create 
wealth and skills in this nation and doing that through not doing what we used to or always did. Now, he gave me a history lesson about New Zealand because if you go back, right, to when the white guys first got here, right, they met Maori, right, and initially friends and then white guys kept breaking their word and then there was more altercations. But effectively, in the North Island, up until the period of the treaty, Maori adopted white guys' agricultural measures and set up farming and effectively fed the whole North Island. Right? But then the white guys then decided that they right, were going to take advantage of that and they wanted that nice piece of land or they wanted this and they kept pushing on and pushing on and pushing on. I mean, so this, this whole history of how New Zealand came to be what it is, right, needs to be really understood what, where we come from because we come from a culture which prizes individuals and we come from another culture which pr- prizes the community. Right? Okay? And we need both. We as individuals are nothing absent the fact that we are in a community, a community of interest. And it's our enlightened self-interest rather than greedy self-interest which suggests that we need to involve ourselves in a democracy, right? And look after our collective interest in having, right, a, a, a beneficial and benign environment in which to live in. Okay. Now, like, Bill Such helped, and I had other information as well, because I read a fair bit, but like it was pastoral interests. It was like the New Zealand company, when it came and set up here, like brought out some rich pricks from the UK and they bought up all the, or grabbed hold of all the decent land, particularly down in the South Island, right, and set themselves up as pastoralists. And also there was a whole lot of other people that came out from England, promised that they were all going to get as much employment and work as they wanted and then when they arrived found that they had no work. And so they were effectively very cheap labour for the pastoral interests in New Zealand. And pastoral and finance interests have pretty much driven the, po- the economic and political se- um, set- settings that have been operating in New Zealand for most of its history since then. Okay? Now there was a period in that government that Bill Such is talking about from 1935 through to 1949 where the Labor-led government or the Labor government was instituting policies of economic development and trying to get everyone up. Okay? But since then, right, there hasn't been too much joy. Right? Because as soon as the Nationals got in, they broke down those settings and went back to past, like maintaining a high dollar so that pastoral interests got good prices for their commodities. Okay? And really, we need to have an economy which looks after everyone. And if you have a look at that resolution, it's 12 points address everyone. Right? Not just, right? It's not just looking after our interests, we're also looking after and want to make sure that, for instance, agriculture gets good access to, into overseas markets also. Right, as part of the deal. But we don't see why dairy interests get their interest advantaged right, to the de- detriment of everyone else's interest in respect to pharmac, intellectual property and all the rest of it that's being put on the auction block in respect to TPP. Right, so I've probably gone for a rant there. Is there any other questions? Tracy. Um, when I was at council yesterday, one of the councillors said, did you know that the government has just taken um, a law that says that New Zealand can pass its own sovereign, is a sovereign state that can make, pass its own laws. It's trying to remove it from a particular part of legislation uh, because they say that it should be in another part of legislation, which it should, they're saying it should be that, that sovereign right to pass our own laws should be in our constitution yep. uh, and instead it's in this other piece of legislation so what they're looking to do at the moment you see, 
is that taking it out of that piece of legislation and then they'll reinstate it into the, into the Constitution. Okay. And he says what there appears to be is a time frame where we will have basically no sovereign right to pass, the, the Parliament will not have its own sovereign right to pass laws. We, uh, do you know anything about this? Okay, the, the bill is called the Judica, Judicature Modernisation Bill. Okay? Um, now, I, 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 it's, come across my, uh, it's come across my radar just in the last couple of weeks. Uh, there's a, there is a, a law guy from Auckland who put a submission into that bill who's very... He's opposed to what's going on. Um, because, I mean, obviously for us, like taking things out which strip our sovereign right to manage our own affairs on the promise that they're going to go into a constitution is a little bit illusory in the fact that we don't have a constitution as such, right? Okay? Um, I mean, we do... Like, we've got constitutional legislation and we've got the treaty. They repeal the, the 1852 constitution which has been banned in the right to actually think of. They repealed the 1986 when they brought out that one. So they had no constitution, no here. They still got no constitution. Yeah, so what they've got... No constitution is what we've got. Yeah, but I mean, just be careful. We've, we've got constitutional law. We don't have a formalised constitution like the other 198 countries have got, which has gone to a plebiscite of the whole country and they've said, yes, we agree that this is our constitution, right? And you can't alter it excepting by these special arrangements, which might be either a 75% vote of the parliament or another a referendum of the people or whatever else, okay? We, we don't have that, but we do have constitutional law. There's no doubt about that. Um, so what's being raised there is, is, the, like, is some of the history about what's been done and what that means, right? Because there'll be disagreement about what that means in different areas. And, and I don't know enough to make comment in respect to what you've said there, brother, so... But I'm prepared, like, I'm happy to take that on note, right? Well, there is a constitution in the country which came out in 1835 called the Wakapukan. Yes. It's our constitution of this country. And it certainly ain't New Zealand. Yeah. What I see missing in a lot of these things is the actual history and the rules and stuff that actually bind the state government. There are the nieces and managers here. Right. What we have to do is, this is what we're here to see, is how we can all come together for the well-being of us all. Yeah, and I agree, I mean... We have all the, we have all the laws and most of the law fellas sitting here. Right. And this is what I'm saying, is that um, the Waka Kutani is our constitution for all of us here. For example, is that everyone talks about the genealogy or the thing what I don't see here is where's the owner? We never sold nothing. Our two puddings of this way never sold anything. Yet I can also say my two puddings come on the end of the room too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fortunately or fortunately, but that's how we are now. Yes. Got to know our past to clean up the now, bro. Yes, that's right. And that's what we have here. And then all in all, we all sit in the Privy Council of Aotearoa. We've been doing it for a while now, but things have now heated up and now we're looking well, sorting out the week from the chart, so to speak. Go Cure. Bro. I'd just like to add something to that um, constitution. If you look at the definition in Black's Law, a constitutor is someone who writes a constitution, and a constitution is a, an agreement where someone else pays the debts for another. That's not what you want. Depends what side of the agreement you're on. That's one fact. The other fact is in 1902, 1903, the Privy, Privy Council um, came over and charged the um, uh, Chief Justice, who's the Administrator of Government, yep. and the Executive Council, um, charging them that there was no separation in powers See, the Supreme Court 
has everyone's property vested in it through your registration and through the this document here. All property is vested in the court. But because there's a conflict of interest, the executive council would dictate in terms of all of the trust that, would, that the uh, court was supposed to be uh, determining. So um, when they opened up the Supreme Court, uh, I heard it on the radio just the other day, Friday, it was on Radio Live, that they were going to take the power away from the executive council, John Keyes, and put it back to where it should be in the Supreme Court that protects all the people and their rights and their property. Right now, our rights are being sold off and traded by the Executive Council. Now, um, the other thing, we're talking about corporations. Under the Crown Entities Act and the um, State, um, State uh, Enterprise Act, your names are corporations. Hmm. In the Crown Entities Act, your first name is a is a statutory entity, and your surname is a Crown Entities Company. So, what's been traded in this TPPA, as it was back here in 1935, are people. Now, uh, you go into the House of Lords records, all those people that were brought over here um, with all these promises, and they were made slaves of the pastoralists. Yeah, exactly. We call colonies. Colonies are called um, uh, plantations for slaves. So they were talking about transportation of white slaves. So we're all in the same boat, people. We just got to define who's who in this um, relationship. Now, this this is also a will, and it hasn't been probated. And as long as it hasn't been probated, it allows that there's an administrator, an executor, Maori trustee, and a public trustee. How do you know it's a will? Because they exist. If there wasn't a will, they wouldn't exist. This document is what binds everyone here, regardless of this, and it goes international. This document. This is what affects everyone at ground zero, regardless of what's happening around the world. This document here. So, yeah. I can add more to that. And the facts to prove it. And what we're saying is we're not separating us as such, but we have to start from the beginning because that's where the, the man of the authority is, is in the owner. What the third is a will. Yes. And they didn't say hereditary chiefs and heads or tribes. So everyone was included in it. But they just don't know who we are or you don't know who you are. Yes, but I think you're fine too because the governments are now corporations that change the situation a lot. I mean, even, I don't know about New Zealand, but I know like as Queensland, really, you have no legal right to the property. Yes, but exactly, but they didn't have to walk a boot over all the treaty either, did they? It was all vested in the corporation. The first corporation was set up uh, as a municipal corporation at the um, other side of the bridge at Waitangi. Corporation was called Victoria, yeah. a municipal corporation, and they were also called factories in those days. And everyone that was in, in inside that region, uh, uh, seven miles seven miles around the post office, were all uh, prisoners within those factories. It's still the same thing today, post offices. So you know, we've really got to look at. Um, uh, Got to go back here first and see what the relationship. We, we know what the relationship is, and, and we've been um, uh, teaching them or reminding them of that relationship. But now we're going to go down and we need to direct. Is it possible for us to set up another meeting, or do you have meetings where you share your knowledge? We are well, we well, we to share with yes. everybody. Yes. I think. Can uh, we do can we go again the and yes. then invite more yeah. people? Or, Yes, yeah. that's what we need because uh, it, it's a symbiotic relationship. The um, district councils in, in the information uh, was like a, a container to the district Māori council who are in operation today. People don't realise that the New Zealand company needs agency to exist here and they have agency through the Māori council. Yeah. New Zealand mm -hmm. Māori council 
are the ones that are signing off on us all the time. Is it, is it possible if we do organise a meeting that, that because a lot of the stuff it's very hard for people to grasp the first time. Oh, okay. So <laughs> so you need to you know do what you're doing when you're building up at, at the picture. It's, so it's very clear for people. Another thing why that set the, the men folks is that it's a matriarchal line that we cling to. Sure mm -hmm. I'm sure they won't mind. Well, I don't know. No, no, I think that's one of the major problems that we have is, is patriarchy. That's what it turned into. So when the gentleman didn't know who the man I was or the reptilian was the male. Because have a, I'm, I, I think this is, this is really important that people comprehend uh, this, the discussion and the offering here because really what's being offered is, is that the truth in, in the law about who and what we are is yet to be properly explored and, dis and discovered by most of New Zealand or most of the people that live in this land. And what's being offered is, is that there is truth in what, in, in, if we go back and have a look at the arrangements that were put in place back in uh, 1835 and 1903, on those other occasions and also look at what a, an act of parliament might have done in 1986 in respect to the constitution. So, so these things are all very important in relationship to this. Um, in respect to that matriarchy versus the, versus the patriarchy, like if one has a think about male energy versus female energy, then you'll find that on on balance or generally male energy will be more aggressive and assertive whereas female energy will be more inclusive and nurturing. Now that's not, to, that's not trying to be sexist about gender, it's just an observation of the, different, the two different genders or the two genders. And um, like, I mean that shows up in a whole number of different areas. And it's also like if you like, the competitive edge comes through the male line as opposed to the cooperative edge or idea that comes through the, the feminine line. And, and in respect to, say, human civilization versus other civilization, our civilization seems to be based in competition, whereas other civilizations like uh, social ants, bees, are all based on cooperation. Right? And for the benefit of the hive. <laughs> yeah, but like as soon as as soon as one hive bump, bumps into another, then they go to war. But like in relationship to their their civilization, they're they're cooperating. Well uh, why I get that matriarchal line because they come down through the one and as well when you put a white cut of given to us to actually tie everything together. Well, we given well, that's the history of the people of the land. And when you think, example, we didn't come on the walk since 1350. We was always here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And for every every human being comes through a chain, right, right, of caves from the woman, right, going all the way back, right. So it's like we are all descended from the feminine. Right? Okay. I mean, in terms of chicken and egg, you know, like, you know, like there's a, like, the mass, like Christian religion holds God as male, right? And it's a really interesting um, question as to whether God is male or female. God, it's hard to know, right? <laughs> Jesus is one of us because he never had, he never had a father. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, we're getting way off the track to the subject, and we'll just leave it alone. So, are you are you espousing then that we kind of work towards uh, what happened in Argentina, where individuals were allowed to own so much land that they could grow all their own produce and be independent? Uh, in their own home, like your, your home is your castle, your land is your right to do what you want to believe on, 
without outside interference from the corporation. Um, uh, I'm not espousing anything in particular in respect to what you're asking. Um, I mean, it may well be that an individual owns a piece of land and he decides that he wants to let an oil corporation come onto that land and drill and frack, right? So it may well be in terms of what you're saying that he's operating within his rights over that land. But all his neighbours are going to be impacted by the noise, by all the trucks, by the grinding, thumping, by the big diesel motors that are pushing the fracking fluids and by the general, you know, turning that place to shit, really. Now, uh, so that's where an individual's right to pursue their greedy interest comes into conflict with the community's right to have a good environment. That's where we need to have mediation and balancing, right, be between individual rights and community rights. And that only comes with wisdom and, and with, you know, like good grace and good understanding and people being able to work things through in a reasonable way by dialogue. Right? Otherwise the guns come out. You know, that's a problem. I mean... I, mean, well, I think what we still got to keep sight of is yeah, I believe, yep. um, no more than me do, that back to the globalisation of the one world government, mm. um, this is what is at the guts of all of it. And they're trying to control power and control and it's to take over the lot of us and that's why all these radical things are happening at the moment. And that's what concerns me at the moment so badly. It's just the government is just putting through thing, legislation through willy nilly and we're not even getting it's a the same. Facade. It's a facade for the one world government. Okay, but the only reason they can get away with that is because you're not engaged. Well, most people would just chuck the towel and say, Okay, well, maybe that's. That is that is a worry and that's why there's whatever number of people here in this room that are not like that, they're concerned and they want to do something. Right? But there's some that just don't know either. Okay, so, I mean, but I mean... I didn't know, and then when I found out, I wanted to know. So I am one of those people. That's right. So you can't just say that. No, no, but I mean... There's a lot of people that do want to know that don't know. Yeah, so that's why we need us, like you said, to engage. So if we don't just engage our politics or whatever, we should be engaging people we know. Yeah. There's, yeah, exactly, there's like one out of ten. It's not that they don't want to know about us. There are people out there that do. It's like building up on roof. I think, I think these points of difference here is, is critical to how we regard New Zealand or this country. Okay? It's because we can take an attitude that people are apathetic and use that word, right? but then we just put a whole lot of people in a box. Right? And we, we've then forgotten the other part of what you said, which is the government controlling things. And through their mates in the media and everything else that we get, right, we are not encouraged to true information about what's going on. Like, no one knows about what these brothers are sharing, right? Okay, so from that point of view, right, we're not being shared truth, right? But when we do engage people, we find, oh, you're kidding. Our government wouldn't allow that to happen. And you say, well, that's what's happening, right? Wake up. And I said, no, no way, right? And go off and vote for John Key again. But anyway, like, but that was a joke. But I think often, like, once people get information, then they engage and open up. So each of you could reflect for a moment, each of you could reflect for a moment the first time you heard about TPP, right? 
and then what it took to get you. Hawaii is the Bahama, where the work has not gone. Yeah. Took you right, mate. Yeah, okay, so just think about the first time you heard about it and then what your attitude was to it and then what's brought and how much your attitude has transformed between then and now and how much it might transform yet again as you move on in your discovery about what's going on. Okay, there's a question down there first. Okay, yes. I'm going to say that, that people will engage with something personally Yes. yes. And I'm going to ask, I think we missed some, I apologise for being late, but I'm concerned about the Christian Bible and how much it's been used to the point where it's not the Christian Bible and it's been used to the point where it's not the Christian Bible and it's been used to the point where it's not the Christian Bible and it's been used to the point where it's not the Christian Bible and it's been used to the point where it's not the Christian Bible and it's been used to the point where it's not the Christian Bible and it's been used to the point where it's not the Christian Bible and it's been used Pharmac is definitely under attack in terms of pharmaceuticals, uh, but that's not really what you're interested in. You're interested in people. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Supplements. Okay, so there's a whole number of things where large corporations are driving the agenda so that only the things that they make and produce are the things that are given to you by your doctor, right? Pharmaceuticals. Okay? So if you want alternative remedies and all the rest of it, then they're being pushed aside and they're being, uh, it's being suggested that they are not uh, accurate in what they're su suggesting in terms of a, a remedy. So homeopathy, for instance, or other remedies are being, um, being or, or modalities are being kicked by what's called you know, the corporate interest. So that is problematic and that is going to continue under TPP, right, and get bigger. Yes, therapeutic goods between us and Australia was uh, an attempt on similar... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Okay, so the thing, that, the thing that we're offering is engagement and the thing that we're offering is um, that policy is about protecting our interests, right? Now, we've got it standardised, right? and now accepted by a number of councils. Now, it wouldn't matter if all 78 councils carried the policy if the central government decided that they were just going to sign off on TPP anyway, OK? But the thing it does do, this process, is, is it brings more and more people to information about TPP and it also gets professional-type people, councillors, uh, planners, environmental officers, all those sorts of people that are employed in councils, right, they usually have tertiary education, things like that. Getting them engaged and getting their brains ticking properly about what's going on, they can see that there's problems with what's going on. So there's only one council where I've presented where they haven't accepted the 12-point resolution. Okay, so of all the councils that I've presented so far that have had a vote, it's only Funganui who said no. And what they did was, they they basically said that the gov they moved an amendment and got rid of all the rest of the document and just said that New Zealand government negotiate TPP in the national interest. Okay, that's what they did. Rather. And they said, oh, no, we can't be descriptive with all of those other points. OK? So... <coughs> well, when you make that statement, that they're not going for the national interest, that, that uh, town is not going for the national interest, it's going back into the corporate world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, I mean, it was National Party uh, politics which pushed that onto the council, right, and got rid of those 12 points out of that resolution, right? Okay, now we've got probably stronger, like the councils up in these areas are national party or business oriented or pastoral interest 
uh, type councils. But the thing is, is in all of that, there's big C conservatives and small C conservatives. Okay? Now, the big C conservatives might be out-and-out out neoliberals right? and globalists. But small C conservatives will be very much patriotic type people and they'll feel that whatever they're doing is in New Zealand's best interests. Okay? And they also don't like New Zealand um, losing its ability to make decisions on its own behalf, which is what your question's about. And so <coughs> in respect to that, this resolution offers um, an opportunity for councils to stand up and say, we want to be able to legislate or make rules in, on behalf of our regions and on behalf of the nation for our public interest. And what I, in particular, are trying to do is recast national interest away from whatever it is that they're defining it as and saying that national interest has to equate to the public interest, to the interest of the 4.4 billion uh, million human inhabitants plus all the other inhabitants of this land. Okay? Yes. Uh, sorry, um, Karina. Um, yeah, what well, addressing this lady here um, about an Iceland, and that guy was out here touring, I think he was up with Penny Bright in Auckland. I'm yes, him uh, that's his yesterday. second tour actually, he's done another one earlier but on. A couple he years ago. started one man and one man only, like say we've got our red square. Yep. And every day he went, every day he went with his message until he got two people, to four people, to six people. And then they did what they did as the people of Iceland and overturned their government and brought it back to how it is today. Mm -hmm. So it's like we have to think that we may not make a difference as one person, but it's well, only one stone that can create a ripple. Yes. So never ever doubt yourself and your word mm -hmm. and in your sharing because I don't. one voice can go and make a ripple. Oh, I'm, I'm an optimist. Cool. Yeah. And I'm prepared with others to go out, but sometimes it's hard when you're on your own. But it's reminded me of that man of Iceland, you know? Mm. And sometimes we need just a few just to come together to go, to go, to go, to make those ripples, because soon that ripple creates a, a tsunami. Yeah, because you know? it started with my friend. She didn't know nothing, and now every time I visit her, she asks me something about it. Yeah. At first, she didn't care. So like, I think we see the distraction. You made a day and some people got together yeah. and all supported and you went there and you went there and delivered the messages. People learn because yeah. it's hard to learn when we're enclosed within our homes and so we've got to go out and touch those people. Yeah. So yeah. he's right, distraction, fear and everything, but yeah. it's not enough for me. Yeah. But I'll soon gather that momentum, yeah. you know. And the other one I wanted to address is about um, the pharmaceuticals because we've been speaking a lot about that too. And there's a saying that your food be your medicine, your medicine be your food. Mm. And they're controlling our food and if this comes through we'll see the loss of our community gardens and all that sort of thing. So really as a collective of people we can take our own individual right, our own self-determination and start with our own backyards and our gardens and say yes we'll grow, 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 we'll plant the trees, we'll use the birches and turn the pharmacy from the PH back into the FARM. Yeah, that's right. And that's where we have to start, is with ourselves, our own backyard, and again, it creates a ripple. Yeah. And so therefore, when we start eating healthy again, we're not having to buy their food that we don't know what it is. I can't believe we're going into our supermarkets here, and, and we're in the kiwi fruit industry, and we're seeing kiwi fruit from Italy on our shelves. Yeah. Right. Just show you. Yeah, that's right. You know? So we have to really start stepping up as individuals within our own communities. Yeah, and it takes weeks to ripen. You know, that's crazy. Here we are. And then we've got our own orchards being brought out by the, the corporate woods to be put back into the ground so they can control their prices. But we are now the You know, so games is the one that the most. Yeah, he's a eugenist. You know, Okay, so there's there's a question over here. For ourselves. Okay. When you um TBTA, but I first realised that it was basically because we suddenly everyone was saying we want to know what's in our food, and they were going to say how many teaspoons instead of grams of sugar. But so they decided they'll bring. That's how I see it. You're bringing in this contract, 
but it's not going to bring back, if you stop this contract, how is it going to stop not knowing what we walk, what's in the water that we drink, what's in the sugar, what's in the food that we eat? It's not going to change anything. It's always going to be status quo. We're not going to be, as soon as the people say, we want to know what we're eating, suddenly they bring out this, well, you're not going to find out because we want this. So if we stop this, we still be at status quo because you don't know what you're drinking and you don't know what's in your food. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, so stopping TPP is not going to change too much. Okay, so not stopping it will change a lot of things, not for the good, right? Okay. Secondly, learn the lesson from stopping TPP and then go back and address food, right? I mean, as part of, part of this exercise is about saying, well, right, we're, everyone's whinging about the government, right? Right, everyone's whinging, everyone, everywhere whinges about the government. There's no problem there. Like, everyone's whinging about the government. But then, like, it's like you can whinge about something all you like. It doesn't change anything, but you put out a lot of negative energy. It's probably not good for your heart and probably takes a year off your life. Okay? But if you actually got active and enthusiastic about changing something, right, that would be different. Right? Then... And especially if you join together with your mates. So you learn a few skills about how to join together and then you say, well, we don't like that. We want to change that. I mean, I'd be really keen to get the Local Government Act re-amended so that they put the four well-beings back in the upfront purposes. Right? So that local government, the Act says that local government's purpose is to look after our... Um, ec economic, um, our environmental, our social, and our cultural needs. Okay, those four well beings. And they, in 2012, in their review of the Local Government Act, when they did a whole number of other things, took that out and said, no, local government's no longer about that. So if it's not about that, which is all people issues, what is it about? Mammon. It's bottom lines, right? And if they reduce everything to money, if everything is reduced to money, right, then there's no humanism in it, right? Okay, bro. From what uh, I had with the council and my experience with the council, it doesn't matter which district it is, you know, you get the council members who don't know a lot and they're in there for two. But look at the people that never change their positions in the behind. Yeah. You have the comp controller, you have a legal team. Yep. They're the ones who are controlling everything. It's not the council members. It's the ones in the behind. Yes. They actually control a lot of what goes on the agendas on the councils and things like that. Um, and they've often, in respect to this, come back with recommendations, open recommendations or suggestions that council would be better off waiting to see what comes out of the negotiations. Okay? Now, if council actually took that advice right, and waited until they saw what came out of the negotiations, it would be too late to change anything. Okay? Because once one of these treaties has been signed, it's set in concrete. Right? So if we want to alter the content of the TPP, right, then we need to be very active right here and now. Okay? So, and I'll just go again. Right? So the things that you can do right, is be very supportive about our lobby on your council here, is go to the It's Our Future website and make a submission in respect to the New Zealand Korea Free Trade Agreement and support generally the New Zealand First Private Members Bill against the ISDS provisions when that comes forward. And if you've got, if you want, got time and you want to annoy your MP, whether it be a national guy or whoever, annoy your MPs about them supporting the, um, the, the Fletcher Tabato uh, fighting uh, foreign corporate control bill. Okay, which is the stop ISDS bill. Okay? So those are things that you can do, as well as talk to your friends and your acquaintances. Right? 
So by us saying something to someone, that will have an impact on that person and then they can pass it on and they can pass it on and they can pass it on. And, and what I'm seeing, like, because I've been involved intimately in this project for a while now, I've been on the road for 12 months, like, moving around, talking to people. Um, you know, I haven't got a home now. It's like, a, it's, it's going to be like a paper dart or a stone somewhere where, working out where I next go and live. But it, it, like, it was hard work earlier on getting councils to move, right? When we were at Christchurch, it was, took a long time between getting Nelson, I mean, Tas, um, Tasman to move to when Christchurch. So it was from March to August. And then we got Dunedin. But then there was another four or five month break until we got Wellington City Council, right? And then we got Hutt and then Upper Hutt. And now we're on the go in a whole lot more. Now, Palmerston North City Council actually carried a different policy about TPP uh, back in early 2014. We're now back on its agenda, uh, or before that council on the 28th of April, asking them also to, to support that resolution. So it's growing, right? And, and the councils know I'm coming when I come, and they say, all right, you know how to get in here, and <laughs> we'll give you a space. But the main thing is it's got to have lots of mates, right, from the community supporting it. So if we've got all of you plus your mates, right, pushing it onto the Toronga Council and, <coughs> and we're willing to be there when it's before the council, that's going to give a strong message to the council that there's a support there. And there are a couple of councillors councillors in your council that appear supportive. And it may well be that there's a lot, but they're shy, right? Because they've got, like, National Party operations sitting over the top of them looking at them. Like, everyone's being looked at in this day and age. We all know that. So people have to be brave and also give people a little bit of credit, right, and also operate with a bit of understanding and compassion, okay? Um... But, you know, what I've seen is, is that small C conservatives see the benefit in what we're doing. And from my point of view, right, um, it's logical because it's public interest. It's right in the centre of the road. Right? Um, and really, anyone who's going to negotiate away all of those things doesn't really have the interests of New Zealanders at heart. More questions or discussion or offerings? Go. Policy. If you think that the 78 councils agree to this policy, it doesn't make a difference in the end. No, they're policy not. Policy leads to legislation. Yep. And what's a bill is a bill legislation. Yep, okay. Right. Yeah, okay. So, a, yeah, okay. So, a bill in the parliament, right, it, once it's passed by the parliament, becomes a law, legislation. Okay, okay. So that's that, and Parliament has its rights to make any law it wants to, right? Does it need a vote? Then? It always needs a vote of the parliamentary members. So it needs a majority of the 121 that are currently there. Now, what I was saying before was to give an illust is that legally there's nothing stopping the the government from entering the TPP even if all 78 councils carried this resolution, right? So well, I've made that... It's illegal as legislation itself. Yeah, sorry? So the only reason they can't do it is the legislations we have in New Zealand. Okay. No, they can enter TPP. There's no problems there in terms of their legal position to be able to enter TPP, right, providing our legislation is made so that it's consistent with whatever's in the agreement, okay? Parliament gets to alter legislation, the executive, the, the, um, the cabinet, makes the decision about the treaty. But before they can make the decision about the treaty, our domestic legislation has to be lined up. Okay? So if, if the no ISDS bill became law in New Zealand, then, par then the cabinet would not be able to enter the TPP because it's got... ISDS in it. Okay? 
Okay? So if we, could, if we could get the ISDS bill up, right, right, that would stop TPP. So they could sign it right now? If there was nothing in it that was against our legislation as it stood. Um, no, they would have to alter our legislation in respect to intellectual property and a whole number of other things. Right, okay? So there's not, right now they can't, okay? And it'll be some time. So the Korea agreement was finalised just before Christmas. It was signed in February when John Key dashed off to Seoul for a special signing a few weeks ago. Um, it's open for submissions until the 24th and then they'll have to process those submissions and then, uh, then they'll have to deal with any legislation arising that, that'll have to go through the parliament. So it might take some time before the actual... So does the submissions delay, delay it? Um, depends on whether they'd actually listen to them. Right? Yeah, exactly. So right? Okay, so... But in all of this, it is very important that people not be disheartened but assume that their voice has got some weight, right? So, like you say that you're positive, stay positive, right? Because all of our added efforts will be that groundswell which sweeps them away, right? If like to be positive. Yes. Always positive. Yeah, okay. But all of our efforts in the positive will stop them, right? So, it's just us getting the right number. So, is it... 5, 10, 170, 600, 10,000 people, whatever. All we need to do is get that right number. Right? We don't know what that right number is, but we've just got to keep pushing, otherwise we're dead. Right? Because, you know... Oh, yeah, just want to know the policy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in respect to the councils, the councils carrying the resolution is a political force, it's not a legal force. Right? So it would be it would make it difficult for government to go ahead with the TPP, but they still could and would. What we're going through is a public education program and we're trying to get the councils to engage, right, in their own interests and on behalf of our interests. Right? I just want to know so yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair enough, and it's really good. And I don't want anyone to go away from here thinking that because we've got 78 councils to carry this resolution that TPP won't go through, right? What we're creating is a movement whereby it's difficult for the government to enter into TPP on bad terms. Just imagine those ideas. Okay, so, like, it's, I, it's a nuanced thing, or it's... It's, it's a little bit subtle, but it is important that people understand that what we're trying to do is create a movement to reassert public control of the democracy, right? Energise our democracy, make it work. Have you got this to New Zealand um, They're aware of it, um, but they're running their own campaign in respect to the ISDS. Um, they, I know they're against the TPP. They, they haven't been strong supporters of our campaign in respect to this resolution, uh, but I don't see that they are enemies of it, if you like. You know, like, I mean, and we're all working in our different areas towards a similar sort of result, which is a good outcome for our land. Mm. For some of the politicians, I already think along the same lines as the corporations and uh, that's because of the space that they're in. That's right. And who's, who's paying them and all the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. You have no idea that New Zealand is only that big. There are companies that are two and three and ten times bigger than the whole New Zealand and all the yeah. mm -hmm. And the general public don't realise that. Yeah, but... Like, but they don't realise everything's held in this country in Wellington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> but the thing is, is 4.4 million New Zealanders in New Zealand is a very strong voice and will impact the world, right? Because really, think of... Yeah, okay. Okay, so the, that, was, 
that might have been camouflage for something else, but I won't. Right? Because whilst we got no nuclear power, right, we got neoliberalism at the same time from the same government. Right? And they're the ones that started the rot. Right? So, you know, so I think we have to, like, be real, real about what's going on. But the thing is, New Zealand, right, like, in what we're doing, and we're not the only group in a nation that's opposed to the TPP. There's plenty of people in the USA that are opposed. There's plenty of people in Canada that are opposed, in the other nations that are opposed, okay? So what we are doing in this exercise is we are taking on corporate power and we're saying no, right? So it's a matter of whether or not we can get enough mates to join that party and say no to those corporations. I think we should like just about close it unless there is... I mean, there's people are drifting away. I mean, I could talk all night, but... Yeah. So here's... Marty's going to... Oh, yeah, okay. All right. Marty's reminded me to ask you for money. Okay, so what it is... What it is is we, we need money for to fund our uh, exercise. So I went and did some photocopying tonight so that you got paper in front of you. That cost 60 bucks, right? Okay, now, the last time I had a public meeting, which was Greer Town only a couple of weeks ago, they collected $100 from that meeting. 60 bucks went into my pocket. I've just spent it, okay? Now, I do not get an income from anyone except the public, right? I don't, I'm not working for a living and I certainly aren't claiming the doll or anything like that because I'm not actively looking for work, right? I'm not interested in looking for work at the moment. I'm working on this project and talking to people. So if you want to support me in any way, um, throw some money in that little can down there. If you really want to help me out and you want to get in touch with me, I can give you a bank account and you can send something into that. But that's up to you, no obligation. But Marty asked me to make that statement. I'd forgotten. Cheers. We're also, we're also still um, active donations to cover the high region of okay. So it'd be good if people did put a bit of money in there. Thank you very much. And from my point of view, thank you very much for your inputs and your ears and your smiles at the right times and your critique. It's good to get critique, right? Like, because it's out of critique and challenge that we grow better, like I said before. Thank you very much. Thank you.